I stumbled across a really good and short example of something that is very common in mediumship. I, I run across this all the time, but this was a really great example. And it comes from an unusual source. It comes from a podcast that I just adore. It's Richard Weissman. He's a, um, a professor of psychology in the UK. And he's been around a long time, somebody I've known for an awful long time. He does a lot of work in the parapsychology, paranormal world, you know, Zinner cards and experimentation and ESP and all sorts of really interesting things. You got to check him out. His name is Richard Weissman. I'll put a description in the in the um, underneath this video. Also, he has a podcast that is called On Your Mind. It's really, really good. And I'll put I'll put that in the description as well. So I'm listening to his podcast and he has one on psychics. And of course, you know, I'm going to really gravitate towards that one. And on the podcast, a woman has sent in a question to Richard Weissman and his co-host. And this woman is asking, uh, telling a scenario and ask a question <clears throat> and I've transcribed it. It's only a couple sentences long. And I think within that two sentences, I think it explains a lot that actually goes on in the world of mediumship that we're not quite so used to, or, I mean, thinking about it the way that I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to talk about. All right. So she says that she's a reporter and she is, she's a reporter. Her name is Anna Richardson. I'd never heard of her before, but she is prolific in the UK. Um, she has so many different uh, TV shows, podcasts, uh, television shows, you know, morning news, all kinds of stuff she does. And so she is a known person. She even has a Wikipedia page. And so because of that, it helped me be able to put this together a little bit more. She says, pre-internet, she went to a psychic's house. The psychic opened the door and said, I have your granddad, Harold, here. He wants to speak to you. And she says, that blew my mind. Okay, lots to unpack in that. So she's telling the story to Richard Weissman and his co-host. Co and she asks him, is it possible that people could be really psychic and she says this has never been something i've been able to explain this experience that happened to me was you know, she's never been able to explain it all right so richard weissman throws out a few different things <clears throat> he explains hot reading very briefly and hot reading is kind of my thing so um hot reading and then he also says this really important uh, bit he says if this had not hit you know, Harold as her granddad, which is a grandfather. If it had not hit, then we wouldn't be hearing about it at all. It would be, she would never be explaining it. She, it wouldn't be a part of the, her story that she tells. So, and that's a really good point. So you're remembering the hits and you're forgetting the misses. So I've, you know, I've been thinking about it and there's at least two other really good considerations that we should we should we should consider number one she's a public figure now she says that she had met lots of psychics and lots of mediums and she had done various shows on the paranormal now when i went to her wikipedia page and i'm looking through this it says that she was active it has a little you know years active 2000 to current now 2000 was 23 years ago so if she started becoming active in media in 2000 that is that wasn't well i remember it <laughs> was that pre-internet so i looked it up i said to the internet when was the internet started and it says 1983 so of course we didn't start with everybody on the internet or anything like that but i think it by the 90s, we were really starting to become more internet. I don't know if this woman is talking about pre-social media or what she's saying, but I think it's just a phrase we throw out there. Oh, this is before the internet. 
and we don't really think about what that means. Could somebody have looked her up in 2000, 2005, 2010, something like that? Could some medium who has an agenda, because the woman is a reporter, she's going to do a story on her. And so the medium obviously wants to look good, right? Come out great. How hard would it be for this medium to have gotten a little information and found out something about her grandfather? Not hard, probably. I mean, it would maybe be a social media or a Google search because um, I didn't look it up, but I don't think Google was that big of a deal. But the point is, a medium could have asked around or could have known something about people in the area. You know, it's knowable, especially if she's a reporter how old she is, what her grandfather's name is. Okay, so hot reading is possible. The other thing that I really want to consider, and the reason why I decided I want to make sure I do a video on this topic especially, is I'm not positive that what she says happened is what happened. And I'm not calling her a liar. I'm saying we misremember. And I preach this all the time to you guys. You, you, you've heard this a, a bunch of times already from me. You have to have, at the minimum, audio of the recording of the reading you have had. If you go see a psychic and there's several people in the room with you and you're listening intently and you think you're going to remember or you're taking notes, you know, you're writing down notes as you go, just throw that out. That is, it's... I'm sorry to say this, but it's flawed. It's suspect. It is not good research. It is It is um, not, our brains aren't, we're not like uh, people who are able to re remember every word said in the order they're said at the, you know, in the speed that it's happening at you. First off, it's in a very emotional thing to have a reading done. It's emotional. They're contacting your dead family members, Right. You're intently focused on what they're saying, but the speed that this comes up, lots more questions than you think, and you're giving off a lot of body language. So to just say, I'm going to be able to listen and, and understand what she said, the medium said, isn't really likely to happen. Even if you're relying on to your friends in the room that are listening as well, it's not going to happen. You're just not going to be able to keep great... Um, uh, records of this it because what I'm trying to say is it's the words that are used it's the actual actual words that are used in the order they're used because humans are storing storytelling animals and we tend to hear and take notes of what you know shortcuts we say, and we, I mean, we're hearing something, we, we jot it down. You're making shortcuts of what you think you heard. Now, you might have actually heard some of this, but it's not exactly. And here's what I'm trying to say. This is, let's say she had this reading done in 2000. Okay, that's 23 years ago. She's definitely a storytelling person. She's a journalist. She's on multiple podcasts. She's on multiple um TV shows. She's done all kinds of different things. So she is a storytelling person. And this little bit that she gave to Richard Weissman on the podcast um, is not something she's telling people probably for the very first time. She's probably repeated this multiple times. This is probably one of her go-to lines. She, you know, you go to a party and you start talking about things that are odd. And she says, you know, I've never been able to understand this. I've never been able to explain this. And then she tells her story. I went to this medium. She opens the door and right off the bat, she says, no, this is pre-pandemic. I mean, pre-tampened, <laughs> pre-internet. She says, your granddad, Harold, is here and he wants to talk to you. So it's just something you say. You say it over and over and over and over. It's You're going to remember that's what she said. But I'm not so sure that's what the psychic said. Okay. Hot reading, if she knows her grandfather's name is Harold, okay. she That might have been exactly what she said. But let's just think about it this way. 
She goes up to the door, knock, knock, knock. The woman inside knows she's coming to do a story on her and to get a reading. She opens the door. I mean, do you really think she's going to say, come in here really quick. Your grandfather is here. <laughs> Probably not. But within a few minutes, maybe, the medium does say, "I'm there's somebody named Harold here who wants to be in touch with you. He really wants to talk to you. And as the woman is wa reporter is walking over to sit down, she says, oh, that's amazing. My grandfather's name is Harold. And the medium says, yes, that's what he's telling me. Sit down. Let me tell you what he wants to tell me to tell you. That is more likely to have been what happened than knock, 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 open the door. Hey, your granddad, Harold is here and he wants to talk to you. Come hurry up. Let's get in here and sit down and get started with this. That's less likely, and it does sound a lot more like a hot reading, than knock, knock, knock. Come on in. Come on in. Nice to meet you. Oh, and I, I've been, somebody named Harold has been bugging me all day, and he wants to be in touch with you. Really? Harold? That's my grandfather. Yeah, that's right. He's been telling me it's, he's been waiting to hear from you. You know, he's dying to talk to you. And when she repeats the story, over and over and over again. I'm sure the reporter has told the story multiple times. She repeats it this way. She says, "My, I met this medium who told me right away that my granddad, Harold, wants to be in touch. He wants to tell me something. Do you, do you, I'm hoping I'm explaining this well, because I want you to make sure you understand the difference and the way those words are all strung together. You're granddad Harold wants to talk to you versus there's somebody named Harold who's been wanting to talk to you and you say that's my grandfather yes it is he's been wanting to get in touch with you and it's misremembered not on purpose necessarily but it's misremembered as your granddad Harold is here and he's been wanting to talk to you do you see the difference? I hope so. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I explain that well. The other thing I wanted to mention is if it had been a cold read, like let's say the psychic says, I'm going to throw out the name Harold to this woman who's coming over. You know, even if she genuinely believes that somebody named Harold is trying to get through to her or not is not important to the story. Why the name Harold? I mean, here in America, we're probably not going to see a lot of Harolds. That's not a very common name. The reporter was born in 1970. So let's just say her grandfather was probably born 50 years prior to that. So about 1920s, 1925 or so, more or less. If you say 25 years in per generation, which is pretty typical. And if he was born around the 1920s, I went and looked this up. I found a website that, that has... Um, all baby names for males and females in the UK by decade. And around 1914, Harold was the 18th most popular name of babies. And in 1924, it was the 26th most popular name. So it rates like the top 200 names. And Harold has been in the top 75 since 1944. After that, it's just kind of gone. After the war, um, World War II, it, it's gone. But prior to that, I mean, in 1904, which is not what I think that woman's grandfather was born in, he that was the 14th most common name. So if you're going to throw out a name, you want to throw out something that seems like it might hit an uncle, an uh, in-law, a grandparent, a great-grandparent, a uh, you know, there, there's a lot of different combinations. And if you threw out a name like Harold, something that in 1920, 1925 would have been probably the top 25 names of um, a male in the UK, then Harold's a really good choice. So if she walks in the door and the psychic says, Harold has been here waiting for you. He wants to be in touch with you. He's, he's dying to talk to you. Oh, I shouldn't have said dying to be talking to you, did I? Shy. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> Come on in. And then she sits down and she says, oh my gosh, Harold is my grandfather. That's a hit. And as Richard Weissman says, because it's a hit, 
it's going to get um, remembered. And now 2023, we're hearing about it. And then it's on this podcast. And I think that's much more likely to have been what happens is that it, she could have hot read her. But I think it's more likely that the woman is misremembering. And the reason why I'm saying that is, is because if she had hot read her and she knew that her grandfather's name is Harold, then there would probably be a little more information that she would have been able to get from her. I'm not saying she went on the internet and looked her up. I'm saying that she probably, you know, this woman is a reporter. There's some public information about her and she was able to glean some information. But I think that if she had hot read her, she would have sat her down and given her more information than your grandfather's name is Harold. And then the story, when she repeats it, you know, to different people, would have been my grandfather, Harold, came through. My granddad, Harold, came through and he wanted to talk to me. And he told me this story, this story, this story, this story or whatever. And he gave me this advice. And he asked about my other family members. And he he said this and he was I think the story would be longer and I think it would be have more meat on it because. You guys know me. I'm always going to ask, what is missing in this story? And what is missing is pretty much everything. The story ends with she knocked on the door. She went in to sat down with this medium who knew she was coming, not because she was psychic, and said, you know, something about Harold. And it was probably a typical cold reading with gen generalities thrown out nothing super specific maybe he talked about being in uniform or maybe he talked about flowers gardening fishing good memories scars on your knee um the time that you know he used to love this band or i don't know but general things that were kind of you know not enough that stuck in this woman's mind something that was just like a general reading so i think that if it had been a hot reading it would have had more meat on it but because the only thing seems to be there is this grandfather and the name harold that i think that we're missing pretty much everything else because it probably wasn't that rememberable and so as a person explains something to themselves to other people because of course like i said we like to tell stories so if you're telling a story and you want it to be interesting and people will go, oh, wow, that's really interesting. I think you're going to tell it in that way. Um, I also want to point out that if in my, in my mind, if I was to run across a real medium, somebody who really was in contact with the dead, I, I don't, I don't know if I would ever leave their side. I probably would spend my rest of my life sitting there or trying to spend as much time with them as possible so I could communicate with my family and other famous people from around the world if they want to talk to me that is people throughout time I I would love to talk to them that would be amazing and then we would, could go to the police department and we could solve all those crimes and find all those missing people and let's just get it done I mean that's what I would be doing and we'd win prizes and and so on but if you are running across this person who you think is really genuinely a medium and you can't even remember their name they're just kind of a footnote in your it just you know a, a, a plot point on your story that you're trying to explain to people not something that's like i went to this medium and her name is this and you know i go there every week and no, but it sounds like she went to the psychic once and never went back again. And it just seems odd if it was so accurate and if she was so spot on. So I'm I'm a little skeptical. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm a lot skeptical. So <laughs> I think that it, the first idea that it's a hot reading is possible, but I think that it's probably misremembering and the way it's repeated back is probably just the problem and that was all it was and i'm really interested in this idea of what was pre pandemic uh I keep saying pandemic gosh i can't get this darn pandemic off my mind which is odd because no psychic predicted the pandemic 
that's very interesting. Um, they haven't predicted most of anything. Nothing about Challenger or the or the war in um, happening right now in Ukraine, and the war <laughs> that looks like it's going to be happening in uh, the Middle East right now, because that's all the news is about right now. And on and on and on. Nothing like that's predicted. But if she knows her grandfather's name is Harold, whatever. All right. So I want to do some more articles, more articles. I want to do more of these videos and some of these other topics like this. But I think this is a good standard. Just a quick look at how just that specific word phrase. She's not lying. I really doubt she's lying. I think she's misremembering. And I think that she's concocted this story thinking the shortcut, she's like taken a mental, um, you know, a note, like writing on a piece of paper, Harold, my grandfather is here kind of thing when that's not what the psychic said. So I think this is a great example. And I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm sorry, it's a little rambling because I'm not sure I can explain that really well, but then I tend to ramble a little bit, but please leave your comments. I love it whenever you guys give me comments. I try to respond to everything I possibly can. Please subscribe, like, share, give me more suggestions. I'm happy to hear them. And check out this podcast on your mind and some of the other work he's done. Quirkology is a very uh, popular YouTube channel that he has. And I'll put that in the show, uh, show notes, the description of our YouTube channel or video. Thanks all.